Father. Yes. Every day that passes in the lives of your servants. Yes. We consider this as a precious gift from you. Yes. Once again, you have been merciful to us. You have given us again this day, O loving God, to once more raise our voices in praise and to worship your highest name. Amen. We, can, we, can, we would like to express to you our overwhelming joy, loving Father. Yes. For once again we meet, for we know that every time we stand in your presence, yes. whenever this occasion come into the lives of your servants, this is proof of your love for us. Amen. Thank you so much, loving Father for filling our lives with blessings. Your protection continues to guide us. You are always by your side, by our side, O oh loving Father. Thank you for everything that you have done in the lives of your servants. Amen. Today, as we praise and honor you, O oh loving God, yes. kindly pardon the sins we have committed. Yes. We have done wrong in your sight. Make us worthy again in this holy gathering, loving Father. Yes. Allow us to receive your precious blessings, the strength of faith, your Holy Spirit, and your wisdom. Yes. For these are the blessings that we hold dear in our hearts, loving Father, yes. to sustain us as we sojourn in this wicked world. Amen. Behold now, loving Father, what remains of your servant. Yes. Each and every one of us has a prayer. Yes. We commend to you our lives for safekeeping. Yes. But please, O oh loving God, help us in our daily struggles in this life. Yes. Some of your servants are sick in their bodies. May you please kindly heal us, O oh loving God. Yes. Restore our strength in our bodies, O oh Lord, that the bar of life you have given us, we may use in the service of your name. Some of your people are sad, loving Father. Due to so many frustrations and trials in this life, allow us to find your peace again as in this gathering, O oh loving Father. Yes. That we may be renewed in strength and in spirit. Yes. So that, Lord, we can continue to run the race you have set before us. Amen. Today, Father, as in times past, we will again receive your teachings. Bless your humble servant with your Holy Spirit. Allow him to teach your words full of wisdom, loving God. And yes. let them stay in the hearts and minds of your servants. For your teaching is our light. It is our strength, O oh loving God. As we continue to await the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus. Once more, we call out your name. Yes. Praise be unto you, Lord Savior. We praise and worship you. May you again give voice to our prayers. Ask the Father to forgive our sins. Yes. Ask the Father for the things that we need in life, yes, namely his Holy Spirit and his strength, so that, Lord, these humble servants of yours, however weak we may be, we can continue to finish the race that was set before us. Amen. Loving God, as we continue in our day-to-day -day existence, ever, ever moving forward, loving Father, may you please continue to have mercy upon your people who are being persecuted, those who are imprisoned, O oh loving God, those who are missing, may you return them to their families, the displaced, the exiled, O oh loving Father, we depend on you. You are our refuge, loving Father. Come what may, we will do our best, O oh loving God, to serve and praise your highest name. Amen. Help us to defend your truth. Help us to cling on to the teachings you have given us. For we know in the end, loving Father, this will bring us closer to you. And someday, in the not too distant future, O oh God, we will enter the holy city you have promised unto us. Amen. As always, loving Father, may your kingdom come and let your eternal will be done now and forevermore. Amen. And we accept us, O oh loving Father, once again. We ask our prayers 
In the name of our Lord Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, it is very important to take note that not everyone who attends our group prayer meeting, especially in different sites all over the world, nor in the use of modern technology such as the platform we are using via Zoom, are all expelled and justly expelled from the church. The truth be told that many of the brethren who are still active members, especially church officers, and even ministers regularly attend our devotional prayers and group prayer meetings. It is important to know who these people are. And these people are the same brethren that we have in the church when we were still active in the church. Many of them have been monitoring our group prayer meetings because in the worship services that they attend to, they can no longer feel the Holy Spirit. They feel barren when it comes to the worship services. There are those who are probably just curious, wanting to know what happens during our devotional prayers and even our group prayer meetings. And of course, there are those who would like to spy on us, who would like to wait for us to commit a mistake, vilify us, especially in social media, tell lies about us as if we are establishing our own church, and so on and so forth. But above all of this, brothers and sisters, if we were to look back 10, 20, or 30 years before today, a lot of our brethren, including us, have been very active inside the church. I know most of you have been holding your duties as choir members, as church officers for such a long time. There are those who have already entrusted their whole lives inside the church, even their whole families. The reason is we are at peace inside the church. Truth be told, we are at peace inside the church because we know that it is the true church and it will be the one to take us to salvation. But during the course of time, we realize that the once pristine church is no longer the same church. Fast forward to the present, many of us have been unjustly expelled. Others may still be inside the church as silent defenders, others are just observant, others may be hesitant for fear of persecution, unjust expulsion, harassment, and oppression. But above all of these things, brothers and sisters, it is important that we should all possess one trait that our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ expects from those whom they will call their chosen ones, those who will be qualified for salvation. And what is that one trait? Please listen here as we start reading a verse here in 2 Timothy. 1, 3, up to 5, 8, and 9. And this is what we can read. I give thanks to God, whom I serve with a clear conscience as my ancestors did. I thank him as I remember you always in my prayers night and day. I remember your tears, and I want to see you very much, so that I may be filled with joy. I remember the sincere faith you have, the kind of faith that your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice also had. I am sure that you have it also. Do not be ashamed then of witnessing for our Lord, neither be ashamed of me, a prisoner for Christ's sake. Instead, take your part in suffering for the good news as God gives you the strength for it. He saved us and called us to be his own people, not because of what we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. What is the trait that is expected from the chosen ones of our Lord God? According to Apostle Paul, I remember the sincere faith 
that you have. Therefore, it is important for a person to have that sincere faith in our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you notice in the verse, it is the kind of faith that your grandmother, Lois, and your mother Eunice also had. I'm sure that you have it also. If you notice, brothers and sisters, from generation to generation to generation, that sincere faith have been passed on. That is why we know a lot of brethren in different locales, in different districts, in different parts of the world, whose faith have been firm from the grandparents down to the parents, to the children, even to the grandchildren. They have that firm resolve. They have that sincere faith in our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are all products of this faith. The parents here today are products of this faith. The children here today, especially those who are watching us via Zoom, are all products of this faith. How can we be sure, assured of that? You know, if you don't have that faith, why are you here? Why are you even here? You could be spending your time somewhere else. You can be spending this time doing something else. But we know that it's our divine duty to worship our Lord God, to listen to his words, to inculcate that in the minds of hearts of the children of today, so that they too may have that sincere faith in our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why, brothers and sisters, it is important for us to have that kind of faith, the kind of faith being taught by the Bible. Now, the question is, how do we remain in that kind of faith? Now that we are in this situation when there are trials and tribulations, there are so many hindrances for us to worship our Lord God, yet we are still here. We are doing our best so that we may give praises to our Lord God. How do we remain in that kind of faith? Please listen here in Jude 1.3, and this is what is written. My dear friends, I was doing my best to write to you about the salvation we share in common. When I felt the need of writing at once to encourage you to fight on for the faith which once for all and for all God has given to his people. How do we remain in this kind of sincere faith? How do we obtain this kind of faith? According to the verse we have read, we should fight on for the faith. You know, brothers and sisters, in our life, if there is something important, we guard it. In your house, you may have something kept hidden. You protect it because it is valuable to you. Even though there are those people who would like to get it, attack you just to get it, you will protect it. Other people with their lives, they will protect it because it is that valuable. That goes the same thing with our faith. This should be valuable to us in the way that we should fight for it. And because according to the verse, this is the faith that our Lord God has given to his people. That is why we can already establish who among the people of this world is God's people. Those whose faith and firm resolve resides in knowing that it, we should always give praises we should always worship our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, other people choose to be silent. Silent in such a way that they don't want to do anything. They just want to remain inside the church. And I know a lot of us came from this kind of situation. That was our firm resolve before. Come what may, I will remain inside the church. That is why others have a skewed logic already. They have this thinking that, I don't care if there's corruption inside the church. I don't care if there are anomalies, if the ministers are squandering the fund of the church. Because for me, what's important is my membership inside the church. Now, is that justification logical in the sight of our Lord God? Let us ask 
Its membership alone qualifies the people of today for salvation. Please listen here as we read what's written in Jude 1 5. My answer to them is remember this fact, which you know already, that the Lord saved the whole nation of people out of the land of Egypt and then killed every one of them who did not trust and obey him. Now we know who this verse is referring to. The Lord saved the whole nation of people. What is the name of that nation? The nation of Israel. And if we read the Bible, we can read that Israel is the nation of God. They had that name. The name given by our Lord God that distinguished them from other countries, from other cities, from other people. They were chosen by our Lord God. Israel was his nation. They were destined for the promised land. But it happened that even though they are still members of Israel, they were called Israelites, there came a point that every one of them perished. Who were perished? Those people who did not trust and obey our Lord God. So a person may obtain the membership. He may remain inside the church as of today, the same way that the Israelites remained as Israelites, but they were not saved. They failed to receive the promised land. So there are those who may still be members of the Church of Christ, but will not attain salvation. Why? Because they also did not follow the teachings. They forgot to trust and obey our Lord God. Now, other people might say that pertains only for those ordinary members. But you know, brother, I'm not just an ordinary member. I am a church officer. I am a choir member. Others may say they are officers in the finance department. They may be SCAN members. They may be ministers. They may be holding a lot of positions or duties inside the church. So therefore, they will feel that this is where they should be. You know the saying, mamamatay tayong yakap-yakap natin ang ating tungkulin. That goes for every church officer. We will die embracing our duties inside the church. But the problem is, they forgot to whom do they serve their duties. Do they serve their duties towards man or towards God? Why do we need to distinguish that? Because once the duty is no longer for our Lord God, then even though you remain in that duty, it will be in vain. It will be worthless in the sight of our Lord God, and it will not make you attain salvation. So that is why, is there a verse in the Bible which specifies that even though they may have a special function or a duty in the sight of our Lord God, yet they will also not be saved come judgment day. Please listen as we read here in the verse 6. Remember the angels who did not stay within the limits of their proper authority, but abandoned their own dwelling place? They are bound with eternal chains in the darkness below, where God is keeping them for that great day on which they will be condemned. The Bible pertains to the angels. And these angels hold a very specific and special function in the sight of our Lord God. Yet, even though they were angels, they were at fault. What was their fault? Their fault is that they did not stay within the limits of their proper authority. So now imagine today the ministers of the Church of Christ whose, fam, uh, whose primary function is to teach the doctrines, to teach the words of God, to edify the brethren, yet now they are also the agents of persecution. They are the ones who stands in the pulpit preach the words of God, yet preaches in such a way that teaches the brethren 
to hate other people, to persecute them, to, to have contempt in their hearts, to hate even their mother, father, siblings, loved ones. It is already beyond their proper authority. Imagine choir members, scan members, anybody else who would hold key positions or functions inside the church, yet they are the ones who are told, you spy on this family. You tell me who the defenders are and we will persecute them. You do this, you file a case against this defender. We shall do everything we can so that we may punish them for going against the church administration. Imagine a duty that is solely for holy purposes. It's now a duty for worldly purposes. And because of that, just like the angels, they will be condemned for punishment in the sight of our Lord God. Come judgment day. That is why, brothers and sisters, it is important to have importance in our duties. But those duties is not towards man. Because if it's towards man, then it becomes a ritual. It becomes worldly. It is worthless in the sight of our Lord God. Our duties is not towards man, but towards our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And with that comes obedience to his commandments and his teachings based solely on the Bible. Now, what if there are problems that come our way, especially now that we have been experiencing a lot of trials? Ever since the crisis inside the church started, we were conflicted. Because of this conflict, what should be our firm resolve, brothers and sisters? Please listen here in Psalms 27, 1 up to 3. The Lord is my light and my salvation. He protects me from danger. Whom shall I fear? When evil men come to destroy me, they will stumble and fall. Yes, though a mighty army marches against me, my heart sh shall know no fear. I am confident that God will save me. What should be our firm resolve, brothers and sisters? The same resolve that the Bible teaches for those who will continue to follow God's teachings, who will be faithful to our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And that resolve is, though they may be mighty armies that marches against us. And that is true today. If you were to imagine the hordes of men and women that is being employed by the church administration to go against the defenders, to persecute those who have been starting to question about the anomalies and the corruption inside the church, those who are seeking the truth and standing up for the truth, they are being persecuted by armies of people, fanatics. But what is our firm resolve? My heart shall know no fear. Why? It is normal for people to have fear, especially if the overwhelming forces against you is far greater than what you can achieve. Especially if you feel that you are just one person, you're just a small group of people. But we shall know no fear because we have confidence that our Lord God will save us. And that is true. We have experienced that in our lives day by day. And many of us here, many of us who are watching here knows this, experience this, and knows that our Lord God will always save those who will stand up for his truth and his righteousness. Now, what if the trials becomes harder and harder? Of course, now we can say that the trial is hard. But what if it becomes harder? What if it becomes so tremendously hard, so hard, that we just want to give up? We just want to raise our hand and say, I give up. I just want to stop. I don't want to do anything. They win. I'll just be silent. What if that happens, brothers and sisters? And it becomes so hard for us to continue to sojourn in this world. Please listen here in Psalms 119, 81 up to 83 and 114. I faint for your salvation, but I expect your help 
for you have promised it. My eyes are straining to see your promises come true. When will you comfort me with your help? I am shriveled like a wineskin in the smoke, exhausted with waiting. But still, I cling to your laws and obey them. You are my refuge and my shield, and your promises are my only source of hope. It is true that we are waiting every day, waiting for the resolution of all of the trials and tribulations that the church goes through, that we go through every day. But even though we are waiting, brothers and sisters, we should not forget to cling to the laws of our Lord God and continue to obey them. Even though many of us have been unjustly expelled, doesn't mean that we're not going to follow God's teachings anymore, that we are not Christians anymore. No, on the contrary, brothers and sisters, if you were to remember the expulsions during the time of the previous executive ministers, expulsions are done because a certain brethren contradicted or violated a doctrine. But now, a brethren is expelled for following the pristine doctrines in the Bible. There's already a reversal for the expulsion. So we should continue to follow God's teachings. Come what may. Because following God's teaching does not rely solely on our membership inside the church. Because our function to follow God's teaching, that's a responsibility, is towards our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And that would be the basis for our salvation come judgment day. Now, how do we prove that to our Lord God? It is easy to say that we have faith in our Lord God. It is easy to say that we will follow God's teachings and commandments. But how do we prove it? How do we prove that we will cling to his laws and obey them? Please listen here in 1 Thessalonians 2.13. And this is what we can read. And we will never stop thanking God for this, that when we preach to you, you didn't think of the words we spoke as being just our own, but you accepted what we said as the very word of God, which of course it was. And it changed your lives when you believed it. How do we prove to our Lord God that we cling to his laws and obey them? When the words of our Lord God are being preached to us, we consider them not the words of men like us, like the other ministers with us, Brother Louis, Brother John, Brother Rydin, Brother Mike, and all the rest of the ministers. We are but mere instruments of relaying the advices, admonition, and instructions of our Lord God. If you have something in your heart that you believe that these are the words of our Lord God, then you will not look at the person because the person has faults. He has faults, he has mistakes, he has errors, but the words of our Lord God doesn't. That is why during the time of the apostles, they thank God. Because the brethren, when they hear, when they heard the words of our Lord God that was being preached to them, they accepted them as the very words of our Lord God. They should be the same thing today. Because we don't say things based on our own knowledge or wants or whims. We are just mere readers of the Bible admonishing us the way the apostles admonished the first nation of our Lord God. That is why we should prove it to our Lord God that when we heard the words of our Lord God, when we heard his laws and his commandments, we followed it. What is the proof that we believed and we followed it? According to the verse, it changed your lives when you believed it. So how will it change your life? Will it change your life for the worse? Before you're a good person. You follow God's teachings and now it changed you. Now you're worse. Now you hate people. No, that's not the kind of change that will be in effect, that will manifest in our life when we hear and obey the words of our Lord God. The kind of change will be for the good. You will follow God's teachings. You will obey it. 
and you will give that proof to our Lord God that you are qualified for the blessing that he has to give, most especially the salvation that he has promised us. Now, what is God's instruction to those who yearn for salvation? Because all of us yearn for salvation. Many of those who are watching yearns for salvation. They yearn to fill the Holy Spirit in their gathering. So what's the instruction? Please listen in Proverbs 4, 10 up to 13. My son, listen to me and do as I say, and you will have a long good life. I would have you learn this great fact, that a life of doing right is the wisest life there is. If you live that kind of life, you will not limp or stumble as you run. Carry out my instructions. Don't forget them, for they will lead you to real living. Brothers and sisters, the instructions is for us to learn this great fact. And what is that great fact? A life of doing right is the wisest life there is. Don't live your life doing something wrong. Don't spend your life dwelling with hate and contempt and jealousy towards other people. No. Our life should be filled with love, compassion, faith in our Lord God, hope. And that is the kind of life that the Bible says it is the wisest life there is. If we spend it in worshiping our Lord God and doing what is right. When we say doing what is right, that is in accordance to the will, to the teachings and commandments of our Lord God. As the Bible said, carry out my instructions. Don't forget them, for they will lead you to real living. Now, before we end this group prayer meetings, brothers and sisters, it is evident in our life, day to day, that we yearn for peace. Because a lot of these days now, we have been suffering, we have been enduring for quite some time. Because as we witness what's happening inside the church, we do not rejoice whenever we hear the mistakes and errors inside the church, their misgivings and misfortunes. We do not celebrate when we hear of corruptions that's going on inside the church. It actually hurts us. Our heart bleeds knowing that there is anomaly. There's an anomaly. There's corruption inside the church. And the church administration is not doing anything about it because they're involved in it. They're participants to the anomalies and corruption. So sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we ask questions like, until when will this happen? Until when do we have to live like this? Until when do we have to suffer? When those questions arise, brothers and sisters, when you begin to feel that there is a question in your heart, that you are doubting if there would be ever a resolution for all of these trials and tribulations, please listen to the last verse that we will read here in Psalms 37, 34 up to 37. Don't be impatient for the Lord to act. Keep traveling steadily along his pathway, and in due season he will honor you with every blessing. And you will see the wicked destroyed, but the good man, what a different story. For the good man, the blameless, the upright, the man of peace, he has a wonderful future ahead of him. For him, there is a happy ending. Beloved brethren, don't be patient. We're only but human. Sometimes we really get weary and tired. We become impatient, wanting our Lord God to stop everything and finish the crisis inside the church for us to be able to go on with our worship towards him. But the Bible says, don't be impatient. Don't be impatient for the Lord to act. Keep traveling steadily along his pathway. So we should continue to sojourn in this world. And we should go steadily along the path that our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ 
has laid before us. And this path comes along with it, obedience to the teachings and commandments of our Lord God. That's, what, that's when we know that it is the right path. It is the steady path. And in due season, according to the verse, he will honor us with every blessing. Every blessing, brothers and sisters. So we may suffer now. We may have heartaches. We may have sorrows. Families will be crying because of the crisis that we have to endure. But in due time, in his appointed time, we will receive the vindication, most especially the blessing, the salvation that he has promised us. The Bible assures us, for the good man, for that good brethren who will have love in his heart, who will continue to have faith, hope, who will continue to love one another, worship our Lord God and continue to follow his teaching. It's a different story. What's the difference? He will have a good life. And that good life entails him that he will be saved come judgment day. Let us hope and pray, brothers and sisters, that this will also be the life that our Lord God will bestow upon us, not only us, but also our family, our children and their children, so that come what may, we will all be rejoicing in the kingdom of heaven that is set aside for each and every one of us. Please stand and we shall pray. Our beloved Father in heaven, thank you so much, O oh God, for we feel your presence in our gathering. We have heard your voice, Father, your teachings and your admonition. And we admit to you, Father, that these are the words that we have been yearning to hear. Yes, because it is true, Father, that there are times that we are in sorrow. Yes, we are impatient. We want the resolution to happen in our time, Father. Yes, but because of your teachings that you continue to advise us, we know that it is in accordance to your plan. That in your appointed time, Father, you will give us the things that we need in life. Yes. The blessings that you have promised us. Most especially the salvation that is waiting for each and every one of us. Amen. That is why, Father, we only ask of you not to end these trials and tribulations, but to give us the patience, Father. Yes. Give us the understanding that you want us to continue to cling to you, to follow your every commandment, yes. to give you the proof that you need, that we are qualified of the salvation that you have promised us. Amen. Father in heaven, we have never been perfect beings before your sight. Yes. We are very prone to error in mistakes, Father. Please do not look into our mistakes, but instead look deeply into our hearts, Father. In our hearts, you will see our longingness for you. In our hearts, Father, you will see our sincere faith that we want to worship you and give glory to you, Father. But we admit to you, Father, sometimes we grow tired. Sometimes, Father, we just want to surrender and end everything. But at this moment, Father, when it is almost dark and we cannot see anything around us, when we are about to lose hope, Father, that is when we see a glimmer of light in front of us. That is when you reach down onto us, Father. You hold us by the hand and lift us up. You make us feel your Holy Spirit, reassuring us, Father, that you are always there, that you are always looking down on us, guiding us at our every step, protecting us from all evil, and giving us the hope that we need to continue in this journey. Father, there are those who were with us from the beginning, but they are no longer with us, Father. Many of them have grown cold, Father. Many of them have fear in their hearts and have turned away. Father, if it is according to your will, may you please 
Choose the people that you will qualify for salvation. Include our family, Father. Include our loved ones. The time will come when the parents who are alive today, who have kept the faith in their hearts, who have taught us the firm resolve that we have, time will come that they will be resting. The day will fade away, Father. At those times, Father, we only think of our children. May you please continue to give them the favorite soul coming from you. Implant in their hearts and minds that you are the one and only God that we will worship. That we will continue to follow your teachings so that the day will come, Father. We will all be joined together in the kingdom of heaven that you have promised us. Father, we pray for our brethren who are being oppressed. We pray for those who are being persecuted, those who have been imprisoned, those who are missing up to this day. Please, Father, hearken to our prayers. Help them wherever they may be at times when they're about to lose hope. Please fill their hearts with joy and hope coming from you so that we will all have the same firm resolve, Father, that we will continue to follow your teachings and receive the blessings that you have promised us. Our Lord Jesus Christ, please always intercede our prayers to the Father. Whenever you intercede our supplications, our Father hears our prayers, He grants our requests, and He forgives us of the many sins that we have committed. Our Lord God in heaven, we are confident that you have heard our prayers. You have blessed us with the material things that we need in life, especially the health and the life, Father so that we may continue to give praises to you, to worship you, so that we may also receive the salvation that you have promised us. All of these things we ask and beg in the name of our Lord, Christ Jesus. Amen.